look, America's not without its problems, right? There's a lot of problems in America right now. There's hundreds and thousands of people in this country that don't have health care. That's ridiculous. The richest country in the world can't afford to take care of their sick people? That's not great. That's not awesome, right? We need to start doing that. We need to start looking at our sick and taking care of them. We can't have this thing where you go to a hospital and then have to worry about paying that shit off for the rest of your life, right? And the people get mad at me when I bring this shit up. People get very upset, you know? People look at me and they go, Chris, what about Pfizer? Huh? And Purdue Pharmaceuticals. What about them? They need more helicopters. Have you thought about the bottom line? <laughs> That's the problem with this debate about healthcare in our country, isn't it? It's about the cost of human life. How much is that worth? We just put a price tag on our bodies. That's what we did. We put a fucking price tag in our bodies, and Pfizer is talking about its bottom fucking line. That's a problem in this country. You know, it's a major problem in this country. India tried privatizing their health care and immediately decided that they're not going to do it anymore. Right? When I was growing up, I never had to worry about hospital bills. Like My family never had to worry about doctor's bills or anything like that. When we got sick, right, you go to the doctor and you get a little bill that you can pay off. It's not an extraordinary amount of bill. And it was like, I literally went to somebody's like house. They had turned like a portion of their house into a clinic. That's what it was to go to a doctor in India. It was amazing, right? So you can either go to these people and get what you need to get in order to take care of your health or uh, die. Those are your options. <laughs> and India's like, we got a billion people. It's fine. <laughs> you know? That's what we think about healthcare in our society. It's a major problem in this, in this country, right?
for a long time I called myself a liberal. For a very long time I called myself a liberal. But holy fucking shit, have you seen them lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not a happy bunch of folks, are they? <laughs> like punching people. Throwing garbage cans through Starbucks windows, which is just counterproductive if you ask me. Because the point of Starbucks is to make sure that people are awake. <laughs> and the mission statement of every liberal is to make sure that we're all woke as fuck. <laughs> it's a little counterproductive. Right? Yeah. I don't like riots. I'm not a big fan of riots. You know, I'm a peaceful person. I'm a pacifist. Or some people have labeled me a pussy. <laughs> so I'm just beautiful. <laughs> Alright, seven people got that joke. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a big fan of riots. Right? Rioting isn't even inherently a human behavior. You know, it's not special to human beings. Other animals riot. What do you think a stampede is? <laughs> A stampede of elephants is just a bunch of elephants rioting against lion brutality. <laughs> it's a systemic problem in the jungle, man. <laughs> Turns out they've only been protecting 1% of it, and it's a real bullshit thing. <laughs> Very mad about it. I disagree with the idea of rioting, but I understand why people do it, right? I understand why people veer towards that behavior. Because a lot of these people that are against social progress, against a lot of these movements we're seeing today, they're just very loud. They're loud people. It's a decibels game, right? The KKK is loud, right? They're marching in rallies all the time, lighting crosses on fire. <laughs> Holy shit, you lit the symbol of your religion on fire. <laughs> It's loud behavior. Right? Even God looks at that and goes, hey, take it down a notch. <laughs> Try to listen to my ACDC records up here. <laughs> so when people see that kind of behavior, they go, what the fuck is going on over there? Maybe we should go hear them out. And then they do, and they're like, we should leave immediately. <laughs> That's not what we want to hear. So I understand, right, in order to get the voices of the disenfranchised heard, sometimes you got to throw some shit through a window. <laughs> And when those people look at them and go, what the hell are you doing? They just go, well, I just want everybody to have health care. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, well, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> well, I did, but everybody just called me a communist. <laughs> so I get it.
Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, as my voice cracks in the beginning of the stream, that's that's <laughs> that may or may not be a good sign. I have no idea. Um, I just I, I I just wrapped up therapy like a half hour ago, <laughs> so I guess my throat's still a little little dry from 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 all that talking, from all that mental health, positive mental health stuff. I lost a word. I had a word and then it and then it disappeared. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing okay. How are you guys? Uh I'm I'm doing okay. Better than I was last week. We got Holly, Holly over on the Rockfin. Good to see you. May you made it on time, Holly. Uh that is excellent. That's uh that's what we like to see. Uh is is people arriving to the stream on time. Hello to all the folks over on Rockfin, over on Odyssey. If you're tuning in on Facebook, if you're watching this later, hello, how are you? How's the future? I hope the future is doing well, uh, and uh, and 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 more oceans haven't caught on fire, huh? Should we talk about that for just a minute? I fucking i i i uh, i had a crazy week last week and decided, you know what? I should probably unplug. I need to get my get my head in, in into the into the right space. Uh, and then, uh, and then the ocean is on fire. What the fuck? Come on. Can, can, can us comedian commentator people get a fucking day off? <laughs> can these corporate dickwads not fucking ruin something awesome for just like a 24 hour period so that we, you know, some of us can, can relax and, uh, and enjoy our Spider-Man video games. <laughs> That's what I did. That's what I did on um, on my weekend off. I got to see my sister for the first time in a year. That was very nice. I got to hang out with my sister and, and my brother-in-law. Um, that was kind of cool. Kind of cool. It was very cool. It was nice to see them and hang out with them. Uh, watched a bunch of He-Man because they're making that new He-Man uh, television program on the Netflix. And uh, boy, guys, I was a huge fan of that show in my youth and uh i gotta tell you i uh i don't understand why because uh if you haven't watched the show it's like they do this thing where they like develop a plot and then in the last five minutes of every episode they're just like hey you, you know all that stuff that happened that was like really meaningful and would like drive a storyline and we're just no and we're just going to ignore it and forget that it happened so that next week Skeletor can steal some other fucking magical item that can obliterate the universe or help everybody. Uh, but then we're just going to pretend like it wasn't a thing. Uh, <laughs> so it's just, it was just me, my sister, and my brother-in-law fucking going off on He-Man uh, for, for the weekend, which was nice. Uh, that was fun. Um, and uh, yeah. That was <laughs> uh, update on the car. It's back. It's 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 doing well. Uh, I'm still out two thousand dollars. I have I have to find a civil litigator, and I'm waiting on some stuff that the fucking bank has to send me. I did contact a credit union, put in an application with them. They seem to be pretty understanding of the situation. Uh, and hopefully I can transfer my loan over to them soon. Uh, so that's a process that's been a thing. Uh, so yeah, if you're, uh, if you're in a stable financial position and would like to donate or become a sustaining member, boy, howdy is now the time to fucking do it. <laughs> I have it linked in the, in the comment sections of the videos here and, um, you know, if you can, that'd be great. If not, that's that's okay. Some of you guys have been super generous already, and and it's not necessary, by the way. Uh, it's 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 just a nice little thing, and and I have a statement of transparency. So you know, the the more you guys donate, the closer I will get to achieving all of those goals. Right, doing this without any sort of uh, hindrances and and touring without con constantly worrying about. Uh, finances and doing some cool stuff. I, I want to do a little bit more comedy journalism. You know, if I'm if I'm on the road, I can hit up a protest, cover that, do do, do some of that sort of stuff. I want to talk more about nerdy stuff. 
I want to talk. Uh, I want to have re re recurring guests. That's sort of the plan and talk about some nerdy stuff and be, be able to, you know, hopefully pay them for their time um, because their time is valuable. So, uh, yeah. And, and then today I uh, am going to go sit at, at a, a local bar down the street from my house, grab a drink and do some writing. That is, that is sort of my plan for the evening. Um, I get, you, you know, I've tried to write at home and, and it's always up and down with me in, t in, in terms of, uh, trying to write at home. Um, and that's, that's mostly because, um, you know, I, uh, start writing it, I'll, I'll be productive for 30 minutes or something like that. And then something else will distract me. I'll get a ping on my computer or, or, or. Or, or I'll see something, you know, outside or the TV or something like that. Even though I have my TV covered so that it's not a distraction, sometimes it does. Or my, or, or like a roommate would come in or, you know, Milo demands, demands my attention, which who am I? Who am I to, to not give that adorable fuzzball all the pets that he fucking deserves? I get it. He might be spoiled. There's a chance he's spoiled. I had to get him new food and he's still demanding soft food on top of it. I get it. The cat might be spoiled. It's fine, uh, but I'm gonna go do that because I'm I'm having a little bit of trouble with um with the format of the show, and I don't want to go into it yet. Um, I kind of want to see what happens when I start writing and putting the putting this thing together. Um, I have two different. Well, it's the same show. It's just the the way I want to present it is going to be a little different. And so I'm going to try to kind of work on that for a couple hours tonight, you know, listen to some music, have have a brew or two and uh, be in a be in a cool, hip, fun environment. So if that is if that is uh, uh, hopefully will work out. And, and if you want to be the first people to see the show put together top to bottom, uh, then go grab a ticket to the next virtual show, because July 30th, I'm going to be performing it over Zoom. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to stand up and kind of do it from back here and maybe use my Bluetooth headphones so that I can still hear you guys laughing and things of that sort. Um, and you guys know the deal here is, uh, you guys can leave comments. In, in fact, I encourage you guys to leave comments as we go along through our stories. And, uh, at the end of it, I will look at them, read them and, and, and chat with you guys a little bit and then move to the next, next story there. Uh, Holly singing, love me, love me, love me. I'm a liberal. The, the classic Phil Oaks, uh, re redone by the, the hilarious Ron Placone climate rebel. Thank you for your tip. That is, that is very kind of you. I appreciate it. Um, that is, uh, awesome. And uh, Thomas over on the over on the Rockfin, they are over on the uh, over on the Odyssey. Uh, thank you for the tip. That's very kind of you to tip the uh, hundred library credits there. And uh, and yes, I am I am back to to streaming over over on Odyssey again. Um, I I didn't uh, for one of the streams last week, but I I, I just wanted to kind of get stuff going quickly, so I just did some of the auto stuff. Um, so thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. Uh, very very kind of you guys. Um, and cool. So let's dive in. Okay, so I want to cover this story because um, I feel like not enough attention has been given to this story. Uh, and this is the murder of Winston Smith. Uh, and I know, actually, Lee Camp pointed this out. And I, and I, I didn't realize that this was kind of covered by... Did I... No, he mentioned that he was writing something about Winston Smith, the character from 1984, and had also seen a story about uh, a black guy named Winston Smith who had been murdered by the police in Minneapolis uh, on June 3rd. And uh, he pointed that out. And then I think I, I hadn't realized that I'd pulled up the story as well. Weird, unnecessary backstory uh, to, to that. <laughs> but... Um, it is not the 1980. It's not the narrator from 1984. Uh, a that 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 is not what what I'm talking about. So I kind of want to cover this in three parts. I want to cover the uh, federal task force that did the murdering, uh, the protests that occurred after uh, said murder, and uh, why Winston Smith was targeted, um, or or why pr presumably he was targeted. Let's let's put it that way. 
Uh, that's probably a better and more accurate way of putting it anyway. So uh, the North Star Task Force, which I think I wrongfully called the Northern Lights Task Force in a previous live stream, so that's my bad. Uh, but the North Star Task Force, you guys might remember from the most recent Line 3 update, uh, these guys arrested. They came in unmarked and arrested a bunch of uh, Line 3 protesters. And uh, two of them like didn't receive bail. None of them got their rights read. They didn't get their phone call. And, the, and it's part of this task force, this North Star task force. And it's, again, comprised of, uh, of county and sheriff's departments. It's run by the U.S. Marshals. Uh, that, that, that was new information to me is that they're, they're run by the U S marshals. That was not something, um, that, uh, was, was, uh, in the unicorn ride article about line three. So, so that's, that, that was something that, that I discovered today. Uh, like I said, they don't have markings or badge numbers a lot of times, and they don't have any body cam requirements. Uh, in fact, they actually, they are required to have body cams. But because it's in the loophole thing and federal officers aren't required to wear body cams anyway, so implementing that for federal officers is going to take a lot of time. Uh, and that's why these guys don't have body cams. So uh, what happened with the North Star Task Force? They killed Winston Smith in a parking garage during the day while he was on a date. And he was doing a video or live stream or something uh he does he does a lot of commentary type stuff over over on the facebook lives um and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit here but uh you know this was this was uh broad daylight they brazenly fucking shot this dude in his own car uh, they claimed that he was he had a gun on him and then later said no well it was in his glove compartment we found the gun in his glove compartment before no 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 after we just assumed because we're police and we're racist so we were like oh black guy he's got to be armed somewhere perhaps in the vehicle uh oh better shoot first and never ask questions uh this is very similar to philando castile philando castile also live streamed what was going on with the police said he was a registered gun owner uh, reached over to the glove compartment, said, hey, there's a gun inside the glove compartment. That's not what I'm reaching for. Leaned over to reach, for, and then pop, pop, pop. Cop shot him a couple times. Very similar to this, except witnesses are claiming that they heard 15 shots. Fuck! Oh, goddamn! If it takes you 15 shots to kill someone at point blank, uh, maybe you're not fit to be a cop. Hmm. Is that not part of your training weekend <laughs> that they get for the police officers? The, uh, the, the Friday night training course they get, and then the fr Saturday night binge and the Sunday night fucking recovery. I assume that's what police training is, considering it takes 15 shots to kill someone at point blank. And considering that you didn't really do any investigation on whether this person was armed or not. Uh, so they haven't done a press conference. And uh, they've been asked to do one. Uh, and they've also been asked to disband. People are, are like, no, fucking no. We Why? Why would we want you? You guys are crazy people. And they're not wrong. They kind of are. Uh, the marshals are claiming the reason why this was done is because, and the reason why they didn't announce themselves and didn't have badges or body cams is, uh, oh, well, they were undercover. These cops were undercover. Well, that's really weird because you don't normally like out yourself in broad daylight by murdering somebody as undercover cops. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we change the definition of undercover as we've changed the definition of anti-Semitism, as we've changed the definition of patriotism and freedom. You know, we just change the definition of things. Perhaps we change the definition of undercover. And it means that you randomly just shoot someone in broad daylight. 
which means that a bunch of people committing homicides by gunfire are just undercover, you guys. The cops that killed Breonna Taylor, were they also undercover? Because what about Philando, the cops that killed Philando Castile? Was he under, under? What about the cop that killed Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy? Cop was undercover as as well. Is that is that what gives people carte blanche to just murder who the fuck they want? Oh, they're undercover. They can do whatever. Then they claimed that they thought he was a murder suspect. Uh, this was pointed out in the Star Tribune, uh, who left this lie up on their fucking story, uh, up on their fucking websites for a week. Uh, which, you know, oh, we thought he was a murder suspect is just code for he fit the description. Oh, what description? Uh, what description was that? Oh, I, uh, um, uh, it's, uh, we just, we just have, uh, uh, we just have the, the N word on a piece of paper. That's, a, that's it. And then we kind of send that out to the, to the other police people. And then they go, we fit the description. The Tribune redacted the story a week later. So for a week it was said that he was a murder suspect. Uh, so it's just kind of one thing after another for them to just randomly start saying a bunch of shit. Just one thing after another. They're just kind of caught up in their own web of bullshit. And uh, they're not, you know, there, there's some investigative force trying to um, look into this. It's been a month. Figure in a month you would, you know, find some bullshit. No, because of course, why would they rat out their their cop friends? Protests uh, have been going on since June third, and uh, the police have uh, have implemented just extreme levels of violence towards the protesters, which means that they don't actually understand what the protests are about. Uh, which is sad more than anything, I think. Um, that they just don't fucking get, like, hey, we're... Guys, we're fucking protesting police brutality. We're, pro we're protesting police violence. Oh, you are? What if we beat the shit out of you? That's the thing. Yeah, but for protesting that, we're going to do the thing that you're protesting just to show you that we don't give a fuck. Right? Like, how much more does it fucking need to be? So what do the cops do? Well, they arrested people. Go figure. They arrested a bunch of protesters. Uh, then they started towing people's cars. And they started breaking people's windows. And then they started slashing people's tires. Oh, and then there was somebody that was delivering pizza to a protester, and they knocked her down and smacked her head off the pavement. You know, like the Buffalo cops did to that 85-year-old fucking anti-war protester and let them bleed out on the concrete. And when people went over to help this person, the cops come over uh, on, on their bicycles. They were also bicycle cops. Like, what the fuck? Uh, they, like, pushed them with their bicycles and then they pepper sprayed them. And it's like, all they're trying to do is fucking help somebody that you knocked on the fucking ground. And look, if you're if you're going to come into the comment section with, you know, oh, he deserved it, blah, blah, blah. These protesters shouldn't be out there. Then uh, you're a bootlicking traitor. I'm not going to tolerate your dumb bootlicking racist bullshit. You can fuck right off with those comments. Dissent is American. The reason why this country exists is because of dissent. And you're going to you're going to tell me that dissenting against a, a violent fucking oppressors is wrong, you bootlicking traitor? Fuck off. Fuck all the way off. I don't have I don't have the time or the patience. Open, just keep, just do this. Open your eyes and fucking listen for 10 minutes. And you'll probably realize that you're wrong and a racist and need to reevaluate your fucking life.
He was on drugs. He had a prior fucking arrest record. He didn't pay a parking ticket once. He may have been... There was a chance. Did you see his eyes? You're a racist. Fuck off. I, I, am, I, am, I just don't have the patience for it anymore. After the whole year... After the whole year of watching shit like this, you have the fucking audacity to say... Sh People still say shit like that. On both sides, by the way. It's not just conservatives. It's liberals making fucking justifications for cops, too. Well, it's not all cops. They're, they're not all Derek Chauvin. Fuck off. They might not all be Derek Chauvin's, but the ones that aren't Derek Chauvin get booted out of the force. So you see people that knock people down, watch them bleed, and then pepper spray anybody that tries to help. Fuck off. They're not here to protect and serve you. They're here to protect and serve the fucking rich. And this movement that's happening is, is a movement that's set to topple the oligarchical bullshit system that we have in place now. So, you know, what's, what's up with Winston Smith? Why did they go after Winston Smith? Presumably. You know, I don't know if they targeted him or not, but uh, Winston Smith was pretty politically uh, radical and open, uh, you know, talked about the teachings of Martin Luther King and how to defend yourself and be out on the streets. And that's how they're going to, you know, know what we're saying. And, put, you know, that's that's how leg he understood how it works. Direct action leads to legislation. That's just the way it always works. Without direct action, there is no legislation because politicians do not give a fuck about you. They give a fuck about their votes and how much money corporations are going to give them based on what they say and how they legislate. So if you want them to fucking legislate on your behalf, you have to make them fucking scared of you. And that's what he talked about, because that's what you have to do. Why do you think the Wagner Act got signed? Why do you think we got an eight hour workday? Why do you think child labor is no longer a thing? Why do you think women were given the right to vote? Why do you think the fucking the, the notion of slavery ended? Standard slavery, where, where African Americans were enslaved by plantation owners, not wage slavery. That's different. That's a that's a, a way that corporations get around being like, well, it's not technically slavery. We're giving them some kind of money, not enough to be a person or live, but something. So it's not slavery, right? All of these happen because of direct action. He talked about taking the streets back and he said, stop putting your hands up when you're at these protests and surrendering because that's not what we should do. And actually, Eleanor Goldfield just talked about this on their Sunday live stream. And, um, you know, I agree with that statement. Stop putting your hands up. I think the note, I, I think this idea of um, peaceful, nonviolent civil disobedience is. And, and look, I'm, I'm not advocating for violence because I don't particularly care for it. Um, but how, how, how much can we, the people, take before we start defending ourselves and retaliating from an oppressive fucking force? How, how much? What's the threshold for, for acceptable fucking civil disobedience? Nonviolent civil disobedience. Because we've been trying it. How many marches did we have last year? Alone. Just last year. That was the thing the Democrats kept saying, right? Oh, well, now that Derek Chauvin is done, things are fixed. We should give the cops more money so that they can hire better police officers. Fuck off. You're wrong. It's a systemic problem. You didn't get rid of the only bad cop in the system. There's, I mean, this is proof of it. This happened a couple days after the one-year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. During the fucking trial, minutes down the street, Dante Wright is killed. Adam Toledo is killed. At the same time, the fucking George Floyd... So you're wrong. And the more they try to do that, the more we're going to see pushback on the streets. 
I want to play this clip because I think what this gentleman says is is important and and it kind of more articulately expresses um what I'm trying to say with less curse words I think. So if you're somebody like, "Oh, I w my my. He was just so vulgar with his passionate speech about not wanting black people to be murdered in this country." Here's a black person articulating this probably better than me instead of saying, fuck off. Let us watch. Um, and as information is still coming in on that, obviously the city is going to react however they are going to react. Right now we are seeing people voicing their outrage. You see people making art on the street. You, obviously you see there's a fire there. That's nothing that we're trying to hide. Um, but the reality of the situation is that the more times the police officers keep killing people, What's going down on here, man, it's just serious. The more police officers keep killing people, the more times they they keep taking life into their own hands. Uh, like people are done having that happen. Now I don't know much about the situation over here. I'm just here. I just got here. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that police lethality is a continued problem a continuous problem that is murdering people the people out here and but Dude, it does it does not matter where you are or or what what you do if you're fucking local news cnn or independent journalism if there's a camera and somebody's talking into it, somebody is going to act a fool. They're always going to say some crazy shit and they're like, yeah, I'm wild. I'm fucking, I'm on TV. You know, like it's just no matter what happens, I found that particularly entertaining where I'm like, this is Unicorn Riot. This is an independent news media. And they were still like, we're going to take our 15 minutes of pain. <laughs> it just cracks me up, man. It just cracks me up. They can't live in a world where they won't be allowed to survive. And if they're not allowed to survive, what else? What other kind of recourse is there? And we're seeing that right now. We're seeing that as we're not even two, three weeks removed from the anniversary of George Floyd. And again, we're seeing another body in the streets from the people we're paying to protect us. That is not sustainable. This is no longer sustainable. And the people in charge, those in power, who are hoping that we will forget about it and will move on into the next sexy issue, it's not happening. Your idea of waiting and see and hoping that we all move on to business as usual is not happening. That doesn't happen. People are done being murdered in the streets, and you need to change. You need we justice. We're going to kill shit. We're going to kill, kill everybody. <laughs> so please sh it's time to be done with that all this nonsense sending black people out to fight black people all of that like it's not gonna work it's, it's, it doesn't work anymore you have to change up your tactic try honesty integrity and just some empathy some just god damn empathy please god damn empathy Joe Biden does not have that. The Democrats don't have that. The Democrats want to give more money to the cops because they have to look tough against the Republicans. It's a pissing contest. And we're the ones getting pissed on. Sorry for the gross analogy there. This is the speech that Democrats need to hear. Because when they listen to people like me uh, or, or Jimmy Dore or Ron Placone or... Uh, any other fucking commentator from the left that talks about Nico House, that talks about police violence, like, you know, Slow News Day, fucking you name it. They get upset because we curse. Oh, they're cursing. But this articulately fucking said everything that they need to say. There's no deniability there. You need some empathy. Okay, so he said goddamn once. It's not sustainable. That's what he said. Because it's not. 
this is the message Democrats need to hear. We're not going to move on from this. Nobody's covering these stories anymore. Because, because it's no longer this issue that, that Democrats can go up and say, vote for me because I believe in Bill. Here's a photo of me standing next to some black folks. And they got to vote for Democrat, generic Democrat one. It's not going to work. There, I think if people of color across this country are done being um tokens for votes in this in 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 your in your dumb stupid fucking elections let's look at your comments <laughs> ba, 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 da, 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 da. cynical girls in the house zozovic's in the house uh <laughs> so something says cats should definitely be only only be fed hard food. It's best to give them high quality hard and soft food and do a few days hard and a few days soft on and off. Uh, that's a good tip. We might try that uh, with Milo. We we usually do one day a week where he gets uh, soft food. Uh, so that's a that's a good tip. Thank you. Um, and don't buy pet, pet food from China. That is a a good a good tip. I believe the the new food we have for him is like special for indoor people. Uh, cynical girl, hello, good to see you. Um, Holly says, "Did I say North Star? Did I get the name right?" Okay. Um, and Zosovic is recommending Fist of the North Star. Good Japanimation, uh, and re uh, a resounding fuck off, fuck on the fucker. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, Zosovic says we need legislation that allows protesters to run over the rich. <laughs> uh, rich people, if they get in the way of the protests and are disruptive to protests. <laughs> it's the, that's the mirror legislation to, to, uh, uh, Ron DeSantis's, um, uh, his his legislation where the anti riot bill he calls it where people are allowed to run over protesters if they mildly disrupt their lives. Uh, of course, no findings. Uh, where's Waltz? Uh, no, I've I haven't heard a a good goddamn thing out of Waltz, Holly. I I wish I wish I had an answer for you. I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, but, uh, I, you know what he, you know what he's doing? I bet, uh, what he's doing right now is probably giving Enbridge more contracts to bring in more, uh, workers on that stupid fucking pipeline so that there's more, uh, uh, more, more people committing sexual assaults to help the economy in that region. That's what governor Waltz is doing. He's like, bring in the pipelines, Bring in more pipelines because, you know, these cops need to, uh, I mean, yes, part of their job is to kill unarmed people of color, but they're par another part of their job is also to protect inanimate objects that are killing the planet that uh, have uh, phallic symbolism to them uh, so that I can feel better about my penis. That's what Governor Waltz is doing. Uh, cynical girl says Joe's fresh out of empathy. I don't think Joe ever had any empathy to begin with for him to run out. <laughs> you know, you can only run out of things that you have, right? Like, like right now I, I am, uh, done with bullshit racist comments that reinforce negative stereotypes, uh, or are just hateful for no fucking reason. I am out of, uh, uh patience for that, but that's because I had patience in prior Joe, Joey B's big president Joey B's did not have empathy to begin with for him to run out. Uh, so uh Zosevic says profanity is only appropriate if you have enough money. Uh ain't that the motherfucking truth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I if you're if you're if you're angry and you don't curse. Uh, that's when I'm concerned. If you're like, I'm pissed off, G Willikers, I'm like, that guy's a serial killer. For sure. His basement is filled with dead animals. F guaranteed. He's got a blood bathtub 
where he drains the blood out of little animals and then he puts it in a bathtub. That guaranteed. If somebody's like, oh, I'm so mad about this, ah, oh, honey whiskers, that, that guy has a wall made of skin. F guaranteed. Ending that segment on a real weird note, you guys. I'm ending this segment on a real weird note. <laughs> All right. Moving on to uh, story two. Um, I just put out a, 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 a couple videos uh, this past Monday and the previous Monday talking about Israel. There's another one coming out next Monday. But in the meantime, there's always updates uh, at uh, America's uh, cousin imperialist. Imperialist cousin? How you guys get it? You guys get what I'm trying to say here. Um, they are uh, trying to annex a, uh, a a neighborhood in West Jeruz Jerusalem called Silvan. I, I, if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, I super apologize. But um, yeah, this is a neighborhood in West Jerusalem. And they're trying to basically annex it out. Uh, so that they can bring, bring more, quote, Jewish businesses in. And I think there was like a butcher shop that was pretty famous there that was uh, uh, demolished by these by these uh, colonizers. And there's no other. I mean, they're, they're, that's the only word that describes them. Um, by the way, this uh, this was one thing, you know, it's a long fucking show and, and I couldn't get into the details of every little thing that I had learned and been pissed off about <laughs> regarding Israel and Palestine. Um, but here's the thing. There are no Jewish businesses right in Israel. There are no Jewish businesses. Um, a lot of the businesses in Israel, Tel Aviv and all that are actually multinational conglomerates. They're corporations. They don't actually have any sort of ties to Judaism. And neither do they have any ties literally to Israel because they are they're global companies. Um, they might have a headquarters in Israel, but that does not make them uh, Jewish by any means, considering that uh, Zionism and um, um, Israelism. Sure, let's say that uh, is uh, is connected to being Jewish. It's just not. It's just not. Oh, unless. Uh, is uh, maybe uh, maybe I uh, it's been a little while since I have uh, read the Torah or, or the Old Testament uh, by by which mean I haven't read it because uh, it's that's a, a very long book that I don't have time to read but I've heard some things about it uh, a lot of nice things some terrible things uh, I don't remember ethnic cleansing being a part of that though I mean there's a lot of smiting. Uh, boy, that fucking book does not hold back on the smiting. I'll tell you that, huh? If you're looking for a book where, you, where if you're like, hey, you know, I just read uh, a really nice book by uh, a gentleman by the name of Noam Chomsky, but you know what I really missed uh, in that book is uh, smiting and people lopping off uh, portions of their genitals. Uh, but boy, do I have a, a book recommendation for you that covers uh, both those things. And it is called the Old Testament. Um, but I don't remember. I don't remember ethnic cleansing of the Muslims being in there, or I'm sorry, the Arabs, as the Israelis call them, because you can't call them Palestinians or Muslims. You have to call them Arabs, uh, so you can tell them what country they should go back to, even though they're from fucking historic Palestine. Speaking of, the, uh, so what they're basing this annexation off of is that uh, there's there's a law saying that any Jewish person can claim any property that the, uh, that they may have owned or staked claim to prior to 1948, but Palestinians do not have the same rights. Again, that's a law of infiltration. That's from uh, last week's video that I threw out there. It's, it's called the Law of Infiltration. Uh, it is a law that states that any uh, Palestinian refugee trying to get back home into into what has claimed Isra Israeli land uh, is to be shot on sight. So they literally have a law that calls refugees infiltrators, and then the law states that they can fucking murder them, and that's totally fine. So again, I don't remember that being one of the tenets of Judaism. Perhaps I'm wrong. 
I don't remember there being a law that says it's okay to murder refugees. Uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, that is the new prime minister uh, of Israel, has already come out and said that he wants to annex all of West Jerusalem. Um, and then basically stake claim to all of Jerusalem for for uh, for the Jews in Israel, right? Which then validates their argument that you know Israel belongs to the Jews, the entire land belongs to the Jews, and everybody else that's not a Jew is uh, an infiltrator that will be shot on sight. Uh. And it you know validates some ancient fucking decree that they have. And the evangelicals like this because if all the Jews go home to Israel, which is, you know, that's that's where that's where they need to go. That that'll trigger the second coming of Christ. So, you know, evangelicals are like, yay, yes, do this thing. And then we'll send all of the Jews into Israel. That's what they want. So, like the fact that the Israel lobby and pro-Israel politicians uh, side with evangelicals that are also pro-Israel for a really weird fucking reason. Their reason being uh, the apocalypse. Uh, are also fine with this. But I do feel like... like I don't know. Is it just me? Or, or does it also feel like to you guys that we are in like some shitty end-of-the-world prophecy movie? You know, like it, it's it's like Indiana Jones and the Star of David. Like, what the fuck? When I hear these sorts of things, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, you want the apocalypse to show up? Even then, even then, even if that is the case, that would still make the resistance the good guys. Because <laughs> we're not trying to fucking end the world, man. <laughs> The other the other part of this too is let's say the Palestinians are like, hey, we we we're cool with the one state solution. Let's just share this whole land and we'll call it something different. We'll meet in the middle, you know, and call it something different. And and this can be both our holy lands, and we can both practice our faiths and our religions and, and our philosophies equally. And Jews are welcome here, and Muslims are welcome here, and this is kind of the shared land. That would still mean that all of the Jews can go to this historic Palestine region that would be called something different. And that would still satisfy the evangelicals' fucking apocalypse wet dream. But, they, but instead of going down that route, where people are coexisting with each other, they go down the more callous route, where they're like... What about bloodshed? Because you're you're crazy. That's crazy. That's why I'm like, we're still the, no matter how this shakes out. Like the people that are against is Israel's fucking occupation of Palestine, their theocratic military occupation of Palestine. No matter how you shake it, they're the bad guys in this. There's no justification for them to be the good guys. There just isn't. And all of this, you know, the push for more annexation of, of uh, West Jerusalem and everything is coming after a ceasefire, uh, which means that they can't just arbitrarily fucking throw rockets and say Hamas was there. I saw the glimmer of Hamas in that child's eye, so I had to throw the rockets at them. You know, they can't fucking do that. So they changed their tactics. And now if anybody resists in West Jerusalem, they can open fire and cancel the ceasefire and start fucking lobbing rockets at them. It's like if your sibling was like, your, your parents were like, hey, no fighting. Stop fighting with each other. You know, don't touch each other. And they just go, not touching you, not touching you. not. And then you punch them in the face because that shit is also very annoying. And I'm speaking from experience on both sides of those aisles. <laughs> I have been this guy and I've been the fucking puncher. So, you know, and then the parents are like, 
well, the, you know, you started the, the fight. It's like, no. She did a thing to provoke. She provoked. I'm just, I'm retaliating. She provoked. That's what Israel is doing. Israel is provoking Palestine to, to fight back, and they have a right to defend themselves. They're under a fucking occupation. Looking at your comments. Climate Rebel. Uh, he says, if you look at early vids, he started his major political career as a as a major bootlicker to Wall Street. Uh, you're talking about Naftali Bennett? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about Naftali Bennett. Uh, or are you talking about Joey B's? Joey Biden. That's, that's That sounds like Joey Biden to me. Uh, Book of Organization, the failure of representative government and the solution by the late, great Senator Mike Gravel, uh, the last ever to save the whistleblower, uh, the, the last to ever save a whistleblower from Julian's fate. And he fought uh, corruption to the end. He did. He did. Yes. Uh, that is actually on my book. It's a great recommendation. I have Citizen Power uh, as well. That's on my reading list. I am per I'm, I'm very bad at reading books. Um, I, it's, I think it's a concentration thing for me and I, and I have to get better at it. Uh, and thank you for clarifying the old Joey B's is, is who you're talking about being a bootlicker for wall street. hundred percent. Yes. That's pretty much how we started. Uh, but that is a book that I want to read. And I think, um, I think what I need to do is I need to isolate myself in a place where I'm not going to get distracted to read. I, which which honestly might be going to a bar like one like one or two hours out of the week and just sitting there and reading through a book, you know. Uh, but that is a fantastic recommendation for if you missed it. It's the failure of representative government and the solution by Senator Mike Gravel. Uh, he also has written a book called uh, Citizen Power uh, as well. Mike Gravel is just fantastic. Just go get his shit. Just go get all of the things Mike Gravel has ever written. It'll 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 it'll. It'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Uh, cool. Let's go into our final story for the day. Uh, so uh, I, you guys probably already know this, but there's a Medicare for All march across the country in various different cities with various different speakers, performers, so on and so forth, happening on July 24th. Um, I was going to go to the Columbus one, but I have a prior engagement or else I would. Um, I, I, I was, you know, if, if I didn't have this prior engagement that I made a commitment to, um, I, I totally fucking would go, but Jesse Jett, if you're in Columbus, Jesse Jett's going to be there. I think the LA one has Tara Reed. Uh, yeah, there's like a bunch of people doing performances, speeches, so on and so forth. But this is being put together by activists, by organizers, uh, Savage Joy is is a is a lead organizer uh and again you know I, I i will say this because i know people have problems with other commentators and so on and so forth uh who gives a fuck who gives a fuck who gives a fuck who gives a fuck if you're like i don't like this one personality who gives a fuck do you care about uh, healthcare being a human right then fucking go support this thing this is not about egos. This is not about name credits. This is not about any of that. This is about getting people health care. This is about making sure that people are not in medical debt. This is this is about making sure that if you are if you get sick without you you know period whether it was your fault or not that you're taken care of and not punished for it financially. Remember how I said we found different ways to implement slavery. The de debt peonage is, is one of them. Being in medical debt is essentially a form of slavery. You're paying somebody because you got sick. How fucked up is that? Now, public support for Medicare for All, again, this is not a shocking statement I'm about to make, but public support for Medicare for All has skyrocketed, fucking skyrocketed in the last five years. Just in the last five years, uh, this is not a new debate that's happening in this country. Nancy Pelosi, of all people, was advocating for Medicare for all until she became a corporate whore, 
with two refrigerators full of ice cream that she eats in front of uh, hungry, hungry children uh, and says that they should be satisfied uh, that she is happy. Before she became that kind of a demon, um, she was advocating for Medicare for all, for universal health care in America. JFK was talking about it. JFK was talking about it. This issue has been in the in the in the precipice of ma mainstream conversation, political discourse, for the better part of four or five decades. And the popularity, fucking Scott. Every time you go, every time somebody makes an argument, right? Even conservatives now have to have to admit that Medicare for all would be a good idea. Oh, where are we going to get the money from? Where are we going to get your money? Maybe fucking cut the Pentagon budget. Maybe you don't need that much fucking money. Maybe cut. How about defund the police across the across the country and allocate some of that money into providing health care for your citizens? Oh, I don't know. Tax the fucking rich. I just came up with three ideas and I'm a fucking comedian screaming into a microphone in my bedroom. I'm wearing a band shirt that I didn't buy because the band is a friend of mine and felt bad and fucking gifted me the shirt. I figured I gave up with three solutions that you can implement tomorrow and give everybody health care by Friday. I'm not that smart. I chose stand up comedy as my full time career. I figured out three solutions. And you're telling me Congress can't in 50 years. I think if anything proved as to how popular forced to vote actually is, or sorry, how popular Medicare for all is, it's forced to vote. I gave away the, the thing. Uh, but hashtag force a vote. When that happened earlier this year, it really outed a whole lot of people. And it really showed you who is, who who truly believes in Medicare for all and universal health care. And who just did it because, you know, that seemed like the, the right thing to say. And we're just going along with it because, you know, that was popular opinion. Their politicians were saying Medicare for all, Medicare for all, Medicare for all. The second AOC said, I don't know if it's the right strategy, you know, whatever. The excuses she fucking made to not force the vote. And then the people that were like, you know, it's a strategy, tools, synergy. Okay, I think I've made my point. Those people are the people that don't have fucking belief systems. They're all just celebrity politician whores. That's all they are. They, they don't have any opinions of them, their own. They just parrot some shit that AOC might have said or fucking Rashida Tlaib said. And that's how they make their opinions and that's how they live their lives. No, have if, have a fucking thought. Build, build a belief system for fuck's sake. And most people were saying, hey, we kind of fucking need this. Pramila Jayapal came out. Now, Pramila Jayapal is, is one of the authors of, of the Medicare for All bill uh, that Joe Biden said he would veto if it ever came to his desk. And we'll get to the reason why. Uh, Pramila Jayapal claims that it's no longer a matter of financial, you know, uh, difficulties or whatever. The how to pay for an argument is, is, isn't really working anymore. And uh, as she says about Political will. It's about political will. Okay. Then why weren't you for forced to vote? Why weren't you and the other 115 members of uh, the House that are pro-Medicare for all, why didn't you guys fucking vote for it? What the fuck? You're going to blame political will, but you're also going to show that you don't have the political will to get your flagship issue off the ground to actually help hundreds and millions of Americans. Where's your fucking political will? You're going to lecture people about political will, but you have fucking none?
again, Biden said he'd fucking veto it. He'd veto the bill if it ever got to his desk. That's what he said. And of course he would. I mean, he pumps more money into Cobra. He's he's doing something to pump up Cobra. He's been trying to cut social services in America forever. The Democrats get paid more by the insurance companies, big pharma and hospitals than Republicans do. Democrats uh, got two hundred and eighty seven million dollars. While Republicans only got one hundred and sixty five million. I mean, they're both. I mean, this is kind of what corporations do. They they put money into both sides so that no matter who wins, they win. That's why the elections in this country are are shams and meaningless. I think this is an Emma Goldman quote that said, if voting really mattered, they'd make it illegal. That's how you know that weed is so powerful. Because they made it illegal. And they continue to keep it that way on a federal level. So if Democrats got $287 million from uh, insurance companies, big pharma, and hospitals, and Republicans only got $165 million, who's got more to lose? That's why the Democrats have never really been for. I mean, the DNC even said it, it, this will never be a part of their platform. It's because there's more money in it. In fact, these three industries gave... Biden two times the amount of money that they gave Trump because they know they know that the Democrats enemy isn't fucking Republicans it's progressives it's socialists it's communists and I'm not using those words as an insult I'm using those words as uh as positives it's good to be a socialist it's good to be a communist because it shows that you care about people and you want something better. You're trying to better this world. Whereas being a capitalist is all about you and making the most mo amount of money and fucking over as many people in order to do that. That's what Joe Biden represents. It's what the Democrats represent. That's definitely what the Republicans represent. So another solution is, is um, uh, state by state. You know, California, they're, they're claiming, oh, Gavin Newsom's the guy, which he's not. Uh, New York State is, is trying to push Medicare for all to be legalized, um, which is, you know, that's a strategy, sure. But in reality, it'll wind up the same way as weed. It'll be state by state. Uh, moving is going to be a fucking nightmare. And if you're covered in Pennsylvania, you're not covered in Ohio. So if you travel, as I do, uh, I go to Ohio, I get hurt. My insurance isn't, I, they can't accept my insurance. So now I'm stacked with a medical bill from an Ohio hospital. Same thing with weed. If you cross state lines and you go into a state that doesn't have medical or recreation or decrimmed, you know, now you got to face penalties, even though you in your state might be a, a medical cannabis patient. Or it might be legal recreationally. But let's say you're visiting Wyoming. It's not legal there. You might get put into a federal prison for that. See the problem? See the complexities of doing it state by state? Something this big, something this large? That should just be a right that's granted to everybody? I mean, weed should be legalized at this point. But again, President Crime Bill ain't going to fucking do that. That's why weed's still federally illegal, because it's actually fucking helpful. You want to know what helped me through my anxiety and the deep depression I was in over the winter? And the fact that, like, I can actually have some downtime to myself without having this, this little panic in the back of my... It's weed. I can smoke a little bit of cannabis here and there. And relax. And not have this nag na nagging little voice in the back of my head. I don't have to worry about feeling guilty over taking some time off. And enjoying my life.
The real question is, how do the Panthers do it? The Black Panthers implemented Medicare for all in their own communities. And it worked. People were getting health care. People were going to the doctor, getting checkups, getting their medications. Well, it's because they partnered with local doctors, clinics, and pharmaceutical far, far, uh, uh, neighborhood pharmacies to help people. And they did. And they said, look, we'll take a percentage of patients. So in my opinion, what Medicare for All activists should do is to look at that history. That's why history is so important, because the answers might already be there. So go see how they implemented that. They organized something that was really beneficial. The research for sickle cell happened through that. How did they implement Medicare for All in their communities? Let's start with that. Get some doctors on board. I had a med student once, Johnson City, Tennessee, maybe four years ago, five years ago at this point. We were talking about Medicare for All. And he said, I'm actually against it. And I go, well, that's interesting. Why? And he said, well, I'm in med school. And it's costing me a lot of money. If it's government-run health care, the amount that I would get paid to be a, a resident or a doctor or what have you, even the lowest position would be cut. So I, I, you know, let's, let's just throw a number out there. Let's say the starting salary is a hundred K. Um, I'm probably going to get down to 60. Now, 60 is very respectable. In my opinion, $60,000 a year. Dude, if I make $60,000 a year, I'd be solid. I would be worried about my car payments. You know what I mean? And I looked at him and I said, well, don't you think that that just speaks more to reforming the education system so that it's more affordable so that it's it might also be state run like they do in Germany? Don't you think that we should cancel student debt? And then his response to that was, well, I'm not an expert in that. Well, it doesn't matter. All that shows is that this issue is intersectional. So if you're a doctor and you're like, oh, but my pay, my pay will get cut. Okay. Again, that's the capitalist way of thinking. Oh, my pay is going to get cut. You're still going to make a pretty fucking good living. And now the only difference is somebody else gets to make a pretty fucking good living too. If you're against Medicare for all, it's it's really a, a self-centered argument. The Panthers didn't do this because they they were trying to gain glory for themselves. No, they wanted to help their communities. They looked at poor black people and poor white people, and they said, you guys deserve to go to the doctor just as much as anybody in an ivory tower. That's what this fight's about. Get into your comments. Fred, it's good to see you. Thank you for uh thank you for hanging out, Fred. And Zozovics, thank you for your tip. That's very kind of you. Um Clement Rebel says it has to be some form of single payer to shift the incentive from sick care for profit to health care. Uh yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, you know, that's, that's one of the things you, 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 you brought up a, an, an interesting conundrum, I guess, is so people use different terms. I think they all mean the same thing, but perhaps I'm wrong. But, and if you have some insight on this, please do leave it in the comments. Uh, but, you know, people say single payer health care, universal health care, Medicare for all. The, I, to me, it seems like they're all kind of the same thing. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Zuzovic says politicians need a political will because they're the walking dead. 
Uh, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Uh, single pair increase the quality of. Wait, I lost the comment. Whoops. Uh, single pair increase the quality of care because it's far more efficient. And uh, and the Holly's pointing out Truman was also talking about healthcare, Medicare for all. Um, and Clement Rebel goes on to say, I think the reason they won't give it to us is because they know it won't go away like other countries. Well, of course, I think that was the major reason why they didn't uh, implement something like that during the pandemic. And he had he had a reason. I think somebody pointed it out. Yeah, Holly pointed it out. Social Security Act 1884A is is the emergency health care um, act. And we were under a global pandemic and that would have counted. And Biden could have implemented that in a snap, but he didn't. Even during the even during him trying to get the vaccines out, you could have fucking put it out there. You know how many people would have gone to the doctor just to get checked up? Just to make sure nothing was going on with them. They, they, he, you know, more lives could have been probably saved. He 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 had a way to do that. And and Climate Rebel is a hundred percent right. If they they implemented something like that, there's no fucking way it would go away. And if we and if they took it away, there you know, we would see another mass movement like BLM. For healthcare. Oh, Clabbit Herbal says uh, Medicare seniors get is far from single payer. We we pay a third out of pocket. Huh. That's fucked up. That's really, really fucked up. I did not know that. That's crazy. See, again, all those things to me is is just like why? Why are you making old people pay a third out of their pocket? They're on a fixed income. It just doesn't make any sense. This this model of healthcare has has never made any fucking sense to me. I'll tell you guys this story and and we'll we'll wrap up the stream. The first winter I came here, I'd never seen snow. And my sister and I were super pumped. So my dad basically like gave us some buckets to go shovel his car out with buckets. And we didn't have like winter jackets or nothing, right? So we put on our coats, our, our, our hoodies. I think we had a sweater. Uh, we ran out. We played in the snow. And the next day I got sick. I had like 105 fever. I was fucking delusional. And I was eight, maybe nine. And my mom panicked. We went to the doctor and I'm clearly delusional and fucking seeing shit and like sweating out of my ass. Like it's, it was nuts. Um, and then, and instead of being like, Hey, this is an emergency. Now here, here's the thing. A lot of people are like, why didn't, why didn't she take you to the emergency room? We, we didn't, we didn't know. We'd been in this country maybe four or five months. That wasn't in our heads. So we went to see our doctor. And the first thing she goes is, you have to fill out this paperwork before the doctor can see you. My mom was like, what? My, my fucking kid might die. Eventually, the, the, the doctor showed up and looked at me and was like, yo, what's this kid doing in the fucking waiting room? Gets me back there, checks my temperature, does some, you know, cools me down, gives me some medicine. We go get it. I like sleep for 14, 15 hours, pass out. It took me a couple days to recover, but I was like delusional. And my mom still like will bring that up every once in a while because it's like she could see that I was fucked up and like uh, hallucinating out of my gourd. And they were like, paperwork? And people want to sit there and claim that capitalism is the greatest system in the world. I, I could have died in the fucking waiting room because my mom hadn't filled out the right paperwork. So you're going to choose paperwork over saving somebody's life? What's, what is the point of you being a, a fucking doctor, if that's the case, or, or working in a doctor's office? A cynical girl points out health scare, and that's what it is. 
Oh, you better have your health insurance. Even if you do, you're going to end up being in debt. But the Democrats are done with it. I mean, the, if if Pramila Jayapal wants to show her fucking support for, you know, the flagship issue that she has been running on, then she should go join those protests. She should be advocating for force to vote. Where the fuck is her political will? Thus concludes our broadcast day, folks. Uh, Fred Fred's asking a question. So we shouldn't be organize we, we shouldn't be organizing because cannabis legalization is complicated. <laughs> That's not what I said. Uh I think we should be organizing, but cannabis legalization should be federally legalized. Like it should just be legal uh instead of it being state by state. I think state by state, um state by state gets more complicated than it needs to be. Like full legalization is what I'm talking about. Uh yeah. Sorry for not clarifying that completely. Uh, yeah. And, and like Holly says, docs would rather see patients than do the paperwork. So, yeah, exactly. Especially if it's, you know, don't, the paperwork is secondary. I get that it needs to be done. But when when you have a sick kid in your fucking office, get them to the doctor. Get them to the doctor. Uh, cool. I hope I cleared that up for you, Fred. Uh, is, yeah, I'm talking about full legalization on a federal level, on a national level, state by state gets complicated, uh, and, and we should be organizing, um, to make, to make it less complicated, to make it easier for people to live their lives. Yeah. Uh, anyway, wrapping things up here. If you guys enjoyed this content, please make sure you hit the like button. Please make sure you hit the share button, get the word out, and please make sure you are subscribed whether you're watching this over on the Rockfin, over on Odyssey, or on Facebook or YouTube, please make sure you are subscribed to get notifications from me. Uh, especially on Facebook, I'm pretty sure I'm shadow banned. Not a lot of people see my shit. Uh, YouTube, you know, same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not really showing my stuff to a whole lot of people. Uh, Rockfin and Odyssey, if you're, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, migrate over to those platforms because they are way fucking better. Uh, and they treat their content creators a lot better as well so um so yeah uh, uh head on over there uh if you are on stable financial ground you can make a donation or become a sustaining member make one of uh, monthly donations um that that page krishmohanhaha.com slash donate has a statement of transparency that uh, shows you what your donation is trying to help me achieve um basically create more content uh, do more comedy journalism, help with touring a lot more, help me get to different places, you know, and, and reach a wider audience with stand up with, with this commentary stuff. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're on stable financial ground, that, that is, that is a place to go to, to help out. Uh, you can also join my email list. It's, it's free. It goes, comes out once a week, usually on Sundays. Um, krishmohanhaha.substack.com. It's a recap of all the videos and podcasts that I've released that week. And some, you know, some, if I appear on somebody else's podcast, you get to know about that. Uh, sometimes I write stories and essays this Sunday. I will be going into detail about what happened with the bank and my car, um, and, and kind of write a commentary storytelling piece about that. Uh, live shows, live shows are back. Uh, <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited. I've got, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting together a couple of tours. I'm putting together more dates. Um, I, 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 I'm waiting to hear back from some venues and stuff like that. Uh, but I am going to be performing live comedy in Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Baltimore, Lansing, Detroit, DC, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm, I'm looking to add dates in St. Louis. I'm looking to add dates in Memphis, Huntsville, uh, Norfolk, Virginia, uh, where else am I trying to get to Philadelphia, uh, Harrisburg, places like that. I'm, I'm looking to, I'm looking to put those dates together. So I will be doing that soon. Uh, so if you want to keep up to date, that email list is a good place to go and just go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. K R I S H M O H A N H A H A.com. All right, folks. Um, you guys have been wonderful. 
thank you guys for for tuning in, leaving comments. Uh, Holly, Climate Rebel, Zozovic, Cynical Girl, uh, Fred, you guys are all fantastic. I will see you guys tomorrow with a uh, with a new stream. But till then, take care of yourselves. Be good to each other. Be good to yourselves, and we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys. <laughs>